In this tutorial, I'll be turning a Pygame game into an executable using PyInstaller. PyInstaller is a tool that can turn Python programs into executables, but it also works with Pygame and many other libraries. So that's what we're using for this video. It's really simple to install and use. First thing you gotta do is open up your command line. Um, if you're familiar with pip, you just do pip, uh, or pip3 in my case, install Pi installer to install Pi installer. So as you can see, I've installed Pi installer, and then normally you can run it using that. Although if typing in Pi installer tells you it doesn't exist, you can go to your Python directory and use it from there. That's the issue I have with one of my Python installs where it doesn't bind to Pi installer, well the name Pi installer. So what you can do is like in my case with Python 3.4, which is my version that it didn't install correctly on, I can use this. You can access it using this, and then you can use it as normal. It's the same as typing just Pi Installer. Although in this case, when I type Pi Installer, it's bound to 3.7, whereas the path I just typed was 3.4. If pip is not working for you when you just type pip or pip3, you can also go to the executable for that, which would be under python 3.4 scripts slash pip.exe, I believe. The newer versions of Python do come with pip, but if you're on an older version, you may have to install it manually. And a lot of times the Python installs don't properly bind it, so you do have to do the path. I think it's the older ones where it doesn't work right. That's what happened with my Python 3.4 install. So now that we've got Py installer installed, it's really easy to turn a Pygame game into an executable. First of all, here's the game in question. This is just from my tutorial series. It's from the last video. It's just kind of a mess of stuff. PyInstaller packages games into an executable and it basically packages Python itself so that it can interpret the scripts from what I understand and it doesn't actually compile it. This is why the file size will end up being so large and that's also why I'll be using the term packaging instead of compiling when I'm referring to the process of using PyInstaller. So when you package, if you don't use any extra arguments, you're going to end up with this black window. It's the console. So if you make the game print something, it'll show up here. Uh, a lot of times if you're releasing some sort of product, you don't want that visible and there's an argument you can use with PyInstaller to get rid of that. So in my case, there's only two arguments I'm going to use. So first I'm gonna to get to my directory here and then I can just do PyInstaller and then you do the main script you want to package and anything else you have, you'll need to drag into the output for PyInstaller, like this data folder which contains all my assets in this other script that the game uses. So the, the two extra arguments are going, I'm going to be using are one file, which makes the executable one file in itself instead of including all its dependencies as separate files. It, it's kind of a mess, so one file makes it simple and it's easier for the consumer to look at. And then the second argument I'm going to be using is no console. That's the one that gets rid of the console if you don't want the uh, black window popping up when the game is run. So it's just the game itself. So now I just hit enter and it should package it. This can take a while though. Usually about 30 seconds or so. It depends on how big your game is. Okay, so it finished packaging my game. A lot of people make the mistake of going into build and looking for the executable in here, and it's not in here. Uh, you actually have to go to dist. This is another, these two folders were generated by PyInstaller. Also this file, you can ignore that. But the executable is in dist. It's right here, and if I run it right here, it doesn't have all its dependencies, so it'll do that. So I just take its depend. Well, it's not dependencies; it's its assets. But I just take the assets and go into here, paste them in, and I can run it. And as you can see, there's no extra black window for the console. It's just the game, and it's now an executable. And normally, what I do is I take these two and then right click and send to compress zip folder. And this is the file I'd upload as my game to some place like itch.io if I want to release it somewhere. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. Using PyInstaller is really simple. Um, if you're having issues with PyInstaller, uh, you may want to look up CX underscore freeze. It's another tool for packaging Python scripts on Windows. PyInstaller itself is cross-platform. I've gotten it to work on Linux. One thing you need to keep in mind if you're packaging stuff on Linux is that there's a dependency 
um, and I believe it's for anything with Python. It's a dependency that it uses on Linux called glibc, and the version of it depends on your operating system. If you package on an operating system using a ver version of glibc that's too new, it won't work on older Linux operating systems. And that's one of the biggest issues I run into when trying to release games on Steam made with Pygame. I, it's hard to get the right version of glibc because older versions of Linux run into issues with PyInstaller and the version of Python it needed to run Pygame 2. To package on Linux and Mac, just remember that you need to package on the operating system itself and you'll get something that can run on that operating system. The install process I think is the same on Linux, you just use pip and I'm guessing it's the same on Mac too. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you're interested in my projects, you can check out my Twitter. And if you have any questions, you can go to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions, and I answer stuff much faster there than I do in the comment sections of this video, although I will be looking at those in case people have questions there.